All right, now, in the last video, we talked about how this area between the, uh, the supply curve, this minimum willingness to accept, and the, uh, the price P bar, that can all get eaten up uh, by competition among the sellers <clears throat> as they increase the quality of their goods uh, and the cost of those quality upgrades exceeds the amount that buyers would be willing to pay for, uh, for them. But let's imagine a situation where that kind of competition doesn't happen. Okay, and it, it doesn't eat up those, uh, those resources, those gains from trade. Instead, what you might have is a situation where sellers kind of randomly end up getting to sell or not. And this is the mirror image of what was happening with, happening with a price ceiling, right? In that case, it was, you know, you've got a bunch of buyers who are willing to pay the artificially low price. And some of those buyers who have low values end up getting units while some of the, the buyers with high values uh, end up being left out of the allocation. Same thing can happen on the seller side of the market. What we would like to see happen is all of these sellers with the lowest cost, they should be the ones who uh, produce the, the units and sell them. But when you're holding the prices this high, that won't necessarily be the case. You could have sellers who are at a cost disadvantage, but they can stay in business because they man manage to make enough sales that uh, at, at this artificially high price that they remain profitable. Okay, so uh, the most you know um, I don't know extreme version of this would be if you imagine the sellers just kind of randomly uh, being allocated sales. Customers just randomly go out and and pick a seller, uh, and so the guy with this low cost is just as likely to make a sale as the guy with this high cost up here. Okay, what would happen under those circumstances? Now, they don't go over this in your textbook and they don't talk about it in the MRU videos either, but for completeness, since we discussed this uh, on the buyer side, I wanted to talk about it on the seller side as well. So, what is it that we're uh, interested in? It's gonna be, what is the average willingness to accept of these sellers, right? And what that number is going to be, let's call it, uh, average willingness to accept. The formula to calculate that is gonna basically be finding the midpoint between the, the price that you can sell the good at and the y-intercept of the supply curve, right? Find that, that midpoint. Well, that's pretty uh, easy to do. We're just gonna take the legislated price subtract out the y-intercept of the supply curve. Remember, we call that ys. Divide those by two. That's the same as finding the average between the two of them, right? Or the midpoint between the two. And that's going to be somewhere about on this graph. I don't know. It's about there. That's the average willingness to accept. Now, Everything above that average willingness to accept and below the legislated price, that's going to be the amount of producer surplus that is captured. Everything above the legislated price and below the demand curve, that will show us the consumer surplus. And then we're still left with this, this dead weight loss, right? This cost from misallocation. It's going to be this area here. Right? And we will call that the cost of misallocation. This area represents the fact that Sometimes it's you know this seller who's purchasing, and so there's very little surplus produced on that uh, transaction. Sometimes it's this uh, seller who's who's um, selling, and so again there's there's very little uh, surplus created on tra that transaction. The area here, this red region, that represents all of those kind of opportunity costs where there were sellers who could have sold at a cheaper price, uh, or sorry, at a cheaper cost of production but it didn't happen because some of these sellers got lucky. How do we calculate the area of this producer surplus? Well, that's gonna be pretty straightforward. We just need to find the height, which would be the distance between P bar and the average willingness to accept, and you'd multiply that by QD, the quantity of units 
the buyer's demand, which is the number of, of transactions that will actually occur in this market. So let's go through a concrete example. Suppose that the y-intercept of the supply curve was at $20. Suppose that the legislated price was $80. And suppose that the quantity demanded at the legislated price was 500 units. All right, so start by calculating the average willingness to accept. That would be P bar, which is 80, minus uh, YS, which is 20, divide by two. And so 80 minus 20 is 60, 60 divided by two is 30. Now the producer surplus will simply be the, uh, let's see, the, the price $80 minus that average willingness to accept, which we just calculated is $30. And we'll multiply that by the 500 units that are trading, right? Multiply by QD. Well, 80 minus 30 is 50. 50 times 500 is 25,000. So the producer surplus in this case would be $25,000.